Hi, Dan here from West London Sport. I'm joined today by Ian McCullough. We're going to talk a bit about some QPR transfer news. Um, first up, Ian, a couple of fullbacks or, or wide players, whatever we, we want to call them, uh, linked with QPR today. Um, George Cox of Fortuna Sittard, uh, he's primarily plays left back. Um, they obviously come out with Dave McIntyre's story earlier today. And then uh, Moses Odebadjo as well, a, a player well known to Mark Warburton, um, as, as first mentioned by, by Sean Gallagher. Um, we touched on this before when we spoke about uh, the need for wing backs, but it is a position, uh, those, those fullback wide areas, that they really need to strengthen, isn't it, going into the new season? Yeah, I think so. Um, I mean, Ozzy Akakai finished the season quite strongly, um, you know, probably deserves to be the, the uh, incumbent at the moment, but um, also Todd Kane's got a seven match ban remaining from that incident against Brentford at the end of the year. And also it looks like that his days at the club could also be numbered. Um, but I think, you know, it's such an important part of the team now. Um, you know, if they're going to persist with the three across the back, you know, you want your win back to be as good as possible and, you know, getting forward. And um, I think with Kakai as well, another thing to remember, he's his Sierra Leone side qualified for the African Cup of Nations uh, yesterday. So, yeah. you know, he could potentially could be away for up to sort of, five to six weeks in January, as is the case of Ilias Chair at Morocco and uh, Seni Ding at Senegal. So I think some of these signings do, have, or potential signings, have, have you know, that, that in mind as well. Um, but I mean, certainly on the left side, you know, Lee Wallace confounding a lot of critics last year and, you know, really did have a strong second half of the season. But, you know, he's 34, not getting any younger, you know, he could be another injury away from a long spell on the sidelines. So you need to have someone in support. And, um, you know, I think with Nicker Hammerline and he doesn't really look ready to play playing at this level. You know, I think um, they've put him on a long-term contract last year, but, um, you know, it appears that, you know, they probably want to get him out on loan maybe to a League One or a League Two club just to get some games under his belt and try and sort of uh, improve his confidence and try and improve him as a player. Yeah, absolutely. Like you said, it's a massive part of the way they played last season, wasn't it? When uh, we saw Mike Warburton twitch to the three at the back system, the wing back suddenly became a lot more important, especially with the two strikers. They were sort of a lot reliant on them to to uh, provide the service. And um, yeah, I, I like the look of these guys. I mean, I'm not going to have pretended to, that I've watched a lot of Fortuna Sittard football over the last year or two, but um, from what I've seen, uh, young George Cox, um, he does look like a really good player, uh, very attack minded, gets forward, um, puts a lot of crosses into the box as well. Um, he's notched quite a few assists uh, for the team last year, I think got like five goals and five assists, and he's got really good passing, good delivery, um, takes some some set pieces as well. So I think in that sort of left wing back role, he could be ideal really for that. And um, he's very versatile as well. I think he's played in like midfield and he's played on the the right side before if they need him to. So yeah, I've not seen a great deal of him, but certainly he looks like a positive one. And um, I think Odebadjo is a little bit different. Obviously, he's a lot older. He's a more experienced player. Someone that Mark Warburton knows well, which is, you know, we, we know he's pretty keen on that. He does like to bring players in that he's worked with before and that he knows what he can expect them of. But I think the big concern for me with that one would be, I mean, he's hardly played any football recently. He played 18 games for Sheffield Wednesday last season. Um, I don't think he played a game for them since January. So that's got to be a, a big concern, I think. And I think when he did play for Sheffield Wednesday, he was sort of used as a fullback sometimes and defensively he was quite bit of a liability at times he did give away quite a few penalties and picked up quite a few yellow cards so I don't think I'd be too comfortable relying on him defensively but I think if he can get fit again I think he does offer a lot going forward but um, I mean what do you think of them obviously you mentioned Todd Kane there he's sort of expected to move on or QPR want to want to move him on um, but you know it's kind of tricky with with the band that he picked up and that one could go on quite late into the to the transfer window. But what do you think about the two guys that have been linked? Do you think they're an upgrade on, on what Kane brings? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I do, particularly with Cox. Cox, a player that um, he was quite highly regarded at Brighton. He's quite an interesting story because, um, you know, he's, uh, you know, bearing in mind what happened with Christian Eriksen last yeah, year. Yeah, I was going to say that. I was reading issue. about it before we came on. It's really interesting. Yeah, which, what, um, what, I remember that story, you know, and it looked like his career could have been over before it actually started um, when he was uh, kind of a heart issue was detected by the Brighton team doctors and uh, thankfully he's you know he's, he's um, had a, a minor procedure and it's, it's kind of worked and he's been fit as fit and fine ever since uh, yeah he went out to on loan to Northampton and then joined Fortuna Sittard in the Dutch Eredivisie and he he had a really good loan spell there and then 
you know, had the chance to go and join a League One, League Two sides, but he opted to stay in, in Holland, which kind of shows that, you know, a refreshing kind of attitude to kind of improving yourself as a player. And uh, he's done very well out there as well. For Tuna Sittard, um, they kind of model themselves as being a kind of a, a finishing club. Uh, Tom, Todd Cantwell from Norwich uh, spent time out there and did very well. And um, Cox has done likewise. Uh, um, I mean, like Mark Warburton's very tight with um, David Weir from his time at Rangers, and he's uh, the um, very part of the he's part of the Brighton backroom team in terms of um, recruitment, etc. Down there, so I think there's probably a link there. You know, so I know plenty about the player, so he could be, you know, a, a real upgrade if um, they do manage to get him over the line. Um, Udabajo, sorry, he um, yeah, he's only 27, so there's still some some miles in the leg, so to speak. Um, I mean, Hull City paid three and a half million pounds for him, you know, five years ago. So there's, you know, he's got a bit of pedigree there. And I think at one stage he was Brentford's record signing, and he had two spells there and done pretty well. It's, uh, I mean, Sheffield Wednesday is a basket case of a football club at the moment. Um, and things, you know, obviously didn't really pan out well for him up there, but. Um, He's going to be coming in on trial during pre-season, so you know I'm sure Rangers, the, you know the Rangers coaching staff will have a good look at him there and work out whether or not he's worth you know a short-term contract. As they they've done in the past with a uh, Tom Carroll last season, who's moving on to uh, after failing to agree terms on a on a, a second um, year with the club, but um, but yeah, but I mean, I, I mean, and also you look at the, the signing of Dazelle this week, Andre Dazel, they they kind of it's almost joined up thinking there, they're obviously targeting players of a certain age to come in. And um, I think Dazelle will be sort of viewed as a player for the future. I think, you know, he won't be starting. I think he'll certainly be, you know, pushing the likes of um, George Thomas um, for a place in, in, in the starting lineup. But I mean, it's kind of encouraging for Rangers to be looking at that kind of, in that way, I think. Just, it's almost like grown up, for want of a better word. You're looking at, you know, a certain style of player you want, you know, and you're picking them in. They did it last year with Charlie Kelman. Um, and the goalkeeper, uh, Joe Walsh. Walsh, yeah. Yeah, um, from Gillingham. So, you know, there is a kind of what they see as a progression. And I think with the the launch of that, that B team last year, you'll see a lot of these guys getting better minutes in the reserve teams rather than playing in, in like an almost like old school reserve football rather than the uh, the under 23 system that they, that's, you know, it's a kind of mix and match is available from the, the under 18s and the under 23s so that should you know be a better progressive a more of a progressive step to the first team so i think Dazelle will probably you know get his feet wet there first before kind of playing in the first team but yeah. um but yeah but it, i think it's kind of refreshing they're looking at you know guys that are good a good age um potential sell on value and um you know and if you look forward i mean you have to be looking if players such as Elias Chair are going to continue in the manner they are, to clubs are going to kind of move in for him. So you almost need players that are at the club that can move straight into that that, that number ten role. If um, you know Chair is to you know they are to get a decent offer for Chair and he moves on, uh, rather than having the money and then scrubbing around to find someone to replace him. If you've got someone already in the club who you can sort of you know nurture through to the first team, so I think yeah, it's encouraging what they've done so far. Yeah, I agree. I do really like the transfers strategy. I don't know. Um... Fans won't be too keen to draw comparisons, but it, what you're saying is basically what Brentford have done the last few years. You know, they got the young players in, they sold them on if, if they needed to, like we saw with Ben Rama, um, you know, and obviously Ollie Watkins moving on as well. And then they had the ready-made replacements and then they went out and got replacements if they needed as well. And it took them a, a while, probably maybe longer than it should have. They probably deserved to get promoted um, the season before they did, but um, it does work well. And yeah, it's uh, it's good, you know, it's, it's players like Cox as well, you know, they've got a, a point to prove when they come over here and like you said there's, there's only um, upside really I'd, hopefully it wouldn't command too much of a transfer for fee and um, he has spoken in interviews in the past about wanting to come back to England eventually and in, in the championship and he spoke very highly of his time in, in Holland and how big it was and sort of recommended that more young players should go and go and do it rather than going to play in like League One and, and League Two but he certainly seemed keen on coming back to England eventually so so to see if QPR can, can be the club he does um, does do that with. And yeah, you obviously mentioned Dozel, uh, Dozel, if that's how you say there, he's, he's come in, bolstered the midfield even further. Um, got quite a few bodies in that midfield now when maybe they didn't at times last season with obviously Sam Field coming in um, as well. 
but the saga rumbles on with Stefan Johansson. Um, we always knew it was kind of going to be a protracted kind of process. It was going to take a long time for them to get the deal done. Um, but even with Dizel coming in and the bodies they've already got, is that still the big one for you? Is that the, the one that would really show the intent for next season? Yeah, I, most definitely. I think it almost would be the icing on the cake if they were to kind of get Johansson through the door. Yeah, I mean, obviously Fulham season ended three weeks later than QPR, so that's a a factor as well and um, from what we understand um, you know Scott Parker is probably going to you know be moving on to Bournemouth with um, and it looks all likely very likely that Eddie Howe is going to come in at, 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 at Fulham so you, you've got that situation as well you know new managers who want to look at the squad and who they've got but I mean I've, I've said before you know Fulham squad is enormous they've got almost like I think it's 52 pros um, you know most of them are still under contract so and they've got a plethora of centre midfielders, you know. So there's, a, I mean, there's, I think there's a, a fair to reasonable chance that they still will will get him, Johansson. But um, obviously, I don't think it's going to be one that's done. You know, potentially it could go down to even, you know, right to the start of the season, or even, you know, before just after, just before the window closes in September. But um, both parties want the deal to happen. Johansson's very keen to to stay and. Mark Wilburton's very keen to, to sign him, but um, obviously with, he's still got a year in his deal at Fulham. Uh, there could be uh, other factors at play, so we'll just really have to uh, wait and see on that one.